Uh, thank you. The gentlewoman from Ohio, Ms. Beatty, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Ranking Member. Uh, my first question goes to uh, you, Ms. Marcellin. As we know and we've heard today, CDFIs and MDIs play an essential role in our financial services, providing low to middle income communities and underserved businesses with access to final, with financial services. I'm deeply concerned about the fact that many of these institutions are falling behind large banks with resources to adjust to change in technology and in other areas. Several of our witnesses today uh, made reference uh, to technology and some of the things that happened during the PPP loans where some of the fintechs were at higher rates, uh, interest rates and rates giving to smaller uh, banks. So this is kind of personal to me because I got good news this morning that in my district, uh, MDI has been approved and will open uh, in a few weeks, Adelphi. Bank. So I am very much invested that it's in the heart of my district and that it is a black owned MDI, as you know, uh, only about 19 or 20 uh, black owned MDIs exist now. And this will pro provide a great opportunity to serve under and unbanked communities. But my question is, what can Congress do to support MDIs like Adelphi <clears throat> Bank and other CDFIs in, <clears throat> in communities without undermining consumer protections and prudential standard service such as capital requirements? What can we do to make them more successful? Thank you, Congresswoman Beatty. Um, first, you know, I would like to say, first and foremost, in increasing funding for the CDFI fund. I, you know, there has been a recent increase in funding there, but it still doesn't match what it could be. And that would be the, f the first thing I would recommend. Um, secondly, you know, the CRA is being rewritten as we speak. Um, maintain and expand CRA con um, consideration for community development activities in LMI communities. Um, and I think this will greatly help to benefit CDFIs. And lastly, I would say, you know, continue to adopt reforms that can drive investments in less populated region and communities of color, um, including rural and native communities as well. Okay, thank you. Sort of in that um, same vein, uh, we know that FDI, uh, FDI survey found that in 2021, 5.9 million households lacked a bank account. Although this was still the lowest rate of unbanked since 2009, we're still struggling to reach millions of individuals out there. Do you have any suggestions for why this problem is so difficult to solve? And, and what can we do? We've heard both uh, sides of the aisle uh, talk about unbanked and underbanked. We've heard about capital, whether we should increase the capital. What could that do to MDIs or small banks? Yes, thanks again. So um, first, you know, if we point to the FDIC's recent data, yes, the under um, bank population has gone down. But if you look at, like exactly like you said, across race, it is still disproportionately high. Um, first thing, first and foremost, um, one of the main reasons cited is lack of trust um, among bank um, among among banks. Secondly, um, not being able to afford the cost of banks, and you know, this goes back. Um, to my testimony as well in discussing how mergers has led to the increased cost of um, whether it be minimum balances for accounts, ATM fees, um, and such. Folks really just can't afford the, the cost of maintaining a, a bank account. And also I want to point even to that celebratory fact of unbanked population decreasing. And one of the main reasons for that in the FDIC cited is because of the stimulus checks that people received um, because of the CARES Act. So it kind of underlines the main point. When, when people have money or income, they, they open bank accounts. And I think anything that we can do to support that and increase wages and such, including what 
what else what else I said will Thank help you. to fix this problem. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to have time, but to uh, Mr. Knight, you said on page two of your testimony, you also referenced what happened with small businesses during the PPP and that they were giving loans at higher interest rates. So maybe you can address that same question in writing. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you. The gentlewoman's time has expired. The